All right, good morning, everyone. So today we'll start a brand new module, and actually this module will be part of the last unit in uh, Math 174. Kalain yun patapos sa palang semester na sa huling yugto na tayo ng ng kurso. So in this case, we will be talking about uh, numerical integration. So last time we talked about numerical differentiation and how to uh, improve the formulas we derive for that. Sabi natin isang key characteristic or isang way. To, uh, to get numerical differentiation formulas is to fit a uh, polynomial, say an interpolating polynomial, to the set of discrete data that we might have been given or we might have collected from measurements or from some other means. Tapos kukunin natin yung derivative ng um, um, interpolating polynomial na yon. So that will give us another way on how to generate a numerical integration formula. All right? And that would be the content of module eight. We will look at one uh, way or one class of numerical integration formulas that are derived using uh, the concepts from interpolation. Okay. So uh, for this module, so we have three objectives. So first, we would like as always derive uh, the formulas that can be used for numerical integration. In particular, we will look at the basic uh, Newton Coates quadrature rules today. And then on, on Friday, we're going to look at um, at composite uh, newton coates quadrature rules. And then uh, along the way, we'll look at some error estimates, or actually what we'll be looking at would be some error bounds for this uh, newton coates quadrature rules. And third, in your lab exercise, you will be using the quadrature rules to solve scientific problems. So speaking of laboratory exercise, uh, the, um, the laboratory uh, session for this uh, module will be on Monday, the 22nd of November. Yun den yung deadline, or right before midnight of that day, uh, the first part of laboratory exercise five will be due. So yung exercise na yun, or yung problems para sa XR5 is found or are found at the end of this module. So you can look at it. But let's go to the actual discussion for today. So Newton code quadrature rules. So what are these, how they are defined, at ano yung utility nila? Okay, so if you will remember, um, symbolically, para mas madaling mag-compute ng derivatives. Kasi pag alam mo yung formula ng derivative para sa any given function, tapos alam mo yung addition rule, alam mo yung, um, yung product rule, tapos uh, quotient rule, and uh, the uh, the chain rule, madali mong mag, hindi pala madali. Kung, uh, kung patient ka enough, pwede mong unti-untiin yung pag-compute ng derivative by hand, even if napaka-komplikado nung function na gusto mong i-differentiate. Tama? So para kasing straightforward siya, mechanical exercise siya. Gagamitin mo lang yung mga rules, pwede tumambak sila ng tumambak, uh, they can... Um, they can go on top of each other, but uh, but always you are guaranteed to find an answer for the for the derivative. But that's not the case for integral. Sa integration, meron tayong ilang mga issues na kailangan tingnan, or at least sa integration by hand. So kahit na napaka simple ng requirement para yung function maging integrable, kasi kung meron kang function f that is continuous on the closed interval a b and uh, madali nating mag-exist kagad yung integral. And the integral can easily be found, at least on paper, okay, yung definite integral is just equal to big F of B minus big F of A, where big F is the antiderivative of little f. So pag nakahanap pala tayo ng isang antiderivative para kay little f, who's, who is our integral, then we just need to plug in the upper limit and the lower limit of the integral, take the difference of this function values, and there you go. We have the actual value of the integral. Kaya lang hindi siya ganun kasimple. Merong at least tatlong issues na nangyayari sa integration by hand. Una, siguro ito yung pinaka uh, mabigat dun sa tatlong bullets na ipapakita ko ngayon. Usually, yung uh, minsan, yung... Uh, Yung antiderivative ni f ay hindi natin kayang isulat in terms of elementary functions. So, wala siyang closed form antiderivative. Halimbawa, yung function na napaka-simple, e to the power x squared. It is continuous on the set of real numbers. 
Pero ano nga ba yung antiderivative o ano yung mga antiderivative ni e to the x squared? Kahit anong substitution rule yung gawin natin, wala tayong makukuhang paraan paano masulat yung antiderivative ni e to the x squared or paano mahanap yung antiderivative ay yung um, yeah, yung indefinite integral ni e to the x squared unless magdagdag tayo ng variable of integration. Pero kung mananatili ka sa one dimension, yung e to the x squared, walang substitution rule, walang product rule, or wal, um, what you call this, walang integration by parts that can help us evaluate the indefinite integral of e to the x squared. The same thing goes for sine x squared. It, it's a simple function. It's a composition of sine and x squared. And yet, we don't have a closed form antiderivative for it. Okay? Second issue, big F is more complicated than little f. Minsan, pag kumuha ka ng antiderivative, mas uh, maraming operations or mas komplikado yung mga operations pag compute ng value ni capital F kesa kay little f. So pag nag-plug in ka ng, capit, ng upper limit o lower limit ng integral, posible yung evaluation ni capital F ay mas mahirap kesa sa evaluation ni little f. Tapos pangatlo, and this is the usual uh, problem for us na tinatry talaga nating i- uh, i-solve sa 174, yung mga data na posibleng gusto nating kuna ng integral o yung mga yung information about the integrand f that we would like to integrate is not given in terms of a function but given in terms of discrete data. So pwedeng nanggagaling siya sa measurement. Halimbawa, gusto mong, uh, gusto mong i-compute yung time spent in traffic Pero yung data given in terms of uh, in terms of speed at uh, different uh, different time time stamps. So limbawa, ano yung speed ko between uh, 9 and 9:30 a.m., 9:30 to 10 and so on. So hindi sila given as a function pero as discrete set of data. So para ma-integrate siya, kailangan nating i-translate siya sa isang continuous function na madaling kunan ng integral. Okay, so that would be uh, a nice way to address the third bullet. So, kung pala discrete lang yung uh, set ng data, edi copy natin yung ginawa natin in the first part of numerical differentiation. We can build up a continuous function from this discrete set of data by passing an, uh, a polynomial, possibly, dun sa mga points na yon. And we will use concepts that we learned from interpolation. So, kung discrete set yung data, gawin natin, kunin natin yung interpolating polynomial na guaranteed na dadaan sa lahat ng data points. Meron siyang isang magandang advantage. Kasi pagka nagpadaan tayo ng interpolating polynomial, tas pinalitan natin yung integrand ng interpolating polynomial, what we get is a function that is easily differentiable. Ah, uh, sorry, easily integrable, right? Kasi ang integral ng polynomial ay polynomial pa rin. So, madali siyang kunan ng, uh, ng integral, and then we won't have a problem similar to the second bullet. Kasi makukuha natin integral doon ay polynomial pa rin. At ang polynomial ay hindi ganun ka-komplikado compared to the actual uh, to the actual integrand. Kung meron kang degree n uh, integrand, yung uh, integral niya would be degree n plus 1. But that is not a big leap uh, going forward kasi ang mga computers naman, kayang-kaya nila mag-evaluate ng polynomials of any degree. Kasi ang mga polynomials naman natin ay, um, ay born out of uh, the elementary algebraic or arithmetical operations. So that will give us another advantage. And then the third, or uh, dun, sa third dun sa first bullet, Pa, pabalik pala yung ginawa kong discussion. Dun sa first bullet, ma-address din siya ng numerical integration by put, uh, by using uh, an interpolating polynomial instead of, say, the integrand e to the x squared or sine x squared. So kung ito yung binigay ng integrand sa atin, halimbawa, e to the power x squared, pinaintegrate siya from 0 to 1, pwede pala ang gawin natin, hatiin natin yung 0, 1 into several uh, sub-intervals o hindi pala sub-intervals, pumili ako ng mga points mula kay 0 to 1, kunin ko yung function value nila under e to the x squared, and then I will replace e to the x squared by the polynomial passing through all of those chosen data points. So pwede ko pala siyang gamitin. 
So that gives us an uh, a strategy on how to um, on how to uh, uh, circumvent these three difficulties of symbolic integration. Okay. Tapos hindi na to kakaiba kasi um, this this would not be the first time that you will be seeing numerical integration because I think in your math uh, 36 or even in senior high uh, calculus, you might have seen the trapezoidal or at least must have heard of the trapezoidal and the Simpson's rule, which are approximation formulas for the actual integral. Okay. Now, for today, we will focus on this strategy. Titingnan natin ano yung uh, ano yung uh, ano yung theory behind the use of interpolating polynomials as a substitute to the actual integrand. Tapos along the way, we will be deriving formulas para dun sa um, para dito sa mga um, rules na to involving interpolation first and then performing the integration by replacing the integrand by the interpolating polynomial. At ang tawag, dun sa mga formulas na makukuha natin ay Newton Coates quadrature roots. Okay? But there is a new term here. Uh, Dinescribe niya yung method na to as a quadrature. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng quadrature? Well, a quadrature formula will take this form. So pwede siyang... Pwede natin siyang tawagin in of f. Siya ay magiging uh, summation lamang ng f of x sub i times w sub i i going from 0 to capital N. Medyo magsishift ako dito ng uh, notation. So, uh, uh, gagawin ko siyang mag-start ako sa index na 0. Yun yung nasulat ko sa, sa work text. Pero sa chapter 1 nga pala, ang ginamit natin ay nagsimula tayo sa 1. But anyway, here I still have n plus 1 points because the index began from 0 and ended at n. It would be the function values times some weights which are constant, and it might vary from uh, as i varies. So, ang mga quadrature rules, ang itsura nila ay linear combination siya ng mga function value. When we say linear combination, it will be the sum of function values times some constants. Ang tawag natin sa constants na yon ay weights. So, ito usually yung ginagawa natin o ginagamit na pang, uh, pang approximate sa integrals. But there's another thing that we will also discuss in Monte Carlo simulations, which is more probabilistic in nature. Pero kung deterministic yung gusto nating approach sa pag-approximate sa integral, mga quadrature rules yung ginagamit natin. At sa quadrature rules, ang ginagamit natin, function value ng integrand times some weights. So now, in this class of newton Coates quadratures, titingnan natin paano kinocompute yung weights associated with each of the function values para dito sa mga uh, newton Coates quadrature rules. All right? Now, before going to the actual formulas, ihatiin pa natin yung newton Coates quadratures into subclasses. Meron dalawang subclasses etong newton Coates quadrature rules. But in both of them, yung approach ay ganito. Pipili tayo ng x sub 0 hanggang x sub n. So we have n plus 1 points. And then we will compute the interpolating polynomial passing through x sub 0, comma f of x sub 0, x sub 1, comma f of x sub 1, hanggang kay x sub n, f of x sub n. So kunin mo yung interpolating polynomial. Tapos yung integrand, papalitan natin ng interpolating polynomial. Okay? So what will happen is this. So meron tayong integral na gustong i-approximate. A approximate ko siya using a quadrature rules of uh, possibly degree n. So, ibig sabihin lang na itong subscript, yung integrand, papalitan natin ng degree n, interpolating polynomial. So, this will be just the integral from a to b of p sub n of x, which where p sub n is the interpolating polynomial of degree no greater than n. Ito yung nakita natin from chapter 1. And then we'll use the Lagrange uh, interpolating polynomial or the Lagrange form of the interpolating polynomial P sub n. So in P sub n, equal lang siya dito. So if you still remember the formula. So there's nothing new here. Ito yung formula sa chapter 1. Function values times 
Elsa Biofex, where the Elsa Biofex are the Lagrange basis or auxiliary polynomials that we met in chapter one. Okay, so ito yung product, uh, nandito pala yun. There you go. Ito yung Lagrange interpolating polynomial. Siya yung product ng x minus x sub j over xi minus x sub j as long as j is not equal to i. So uh, if you already forgot how this is derived, we will refresh our memories a bit later para sa, ka, para sa um, ilang Lagrange uh, basis polynomials. But if you want to, to review it, go back to uh, unit one, one of the first few modules that we have. All right. But that's the idea. So, ito yung form ng uh, Lagrange interpolating polynomial. And then now, we have uh, a summation inside an integral. Now, the summation is finite. It will just have n plus 1 terms. So, by the linearity of the integral operator, pwede kong pagpalitin yung order ng integral at saka nung summation. So, magpapalit lang sila. Mauna kong gawin yung integral. Tapos, susundan ko siya ng summation. Okay? Tapos, etong f of x sub i, constant naman yan, right? It's a, it's a function value, walang x involved kay f of x i. Pwede ko siyang ilabas ng integral, okay? And what we'll get is this line. Okay. And then, you will see here na saktong-sakto yung forma niya sa isang quadrature rule. Kasi summation siya ng function value, and then this guy here is a constant. I-integrate lang natin yung Lagrange basis uh, polynomial from A to B. Then we'll get a constant after integrating that. And that will not be difficult because Elsa by of X is just a polynomial, right? Polynomial siya na ganito yung itsura. Product siya ng mga binomials X minus XJ. Kaya lang may divisor na constant XI minus X of J. But nevertheless, it, will, it should be easy to integrate that product. Medyo tedious yung process, lalo na kung malaki yung degree nung uh, L sub i. Pero kung ipapagawa nyo sa computer, madali namang i-integrate yun. So this serves as our weight. So eto. Eto yung weights para sa Newton Coates quadrature rules. Alright? So kukumpitin lang natin yung integral ng Lagrange uh, basis polynomial from A to B. And they will serve as the weights for the function values. Tapos kukunin natin yung linear combination with these weights. And we get the approximate for the integral. Okay? Now, as I have promised, meron dalawang forms ng Newton Coates quadratures. Una ay yung uh, closed forms or yung closed formulas. Pag sinabi natin closed formulas, dapat yung endpoints or yung upper and lower limits of the integral are among the abscissas. So kung meron kang kung nag integrate tayo on the interval a b, di ba pipili tayo ng mga points. It doesn't need to be equally spaced. So pili ka dito ng test point, test point, test point, test point, test point, test point. Okay? Tapos kukunin natin yung sa closed formulas, dapat si a at saka si b kasama dun sa mga abscissas. So, A definitely will be your X sub 0. B will definitely be our X sub N. This guy would be X1, X2, X3, hanggang X sub N minus 1. Alright? So, in essence, ang pipili, pipili lang tayo ng N minus 1 additional abscissas to be uh, included with A and B para mabuo yung set of n plus 1 points na gagamitin natin. Tapos ang mangyayari, kukunin natin yung function value sa bawat isa na to. No, ito yung function value, function value, function value. Okay. Tapos kukunin natin yung interpolating polynomial na dadaan dyan. Tapos yung area under this polynomial curve, ito yung magsiserve na approximate natin para dun sa integral. Ito yung tinatawag natin na i sub n. Alright? And, um, yeah. If the fit of this polynomial is close enough to the integrand, then we are guaranteed to find a nice approximate i sub n for the actual indefinite integral. Okay? 
Now, the other one is the open formulas. Sa open formulas naman, hindi kasama yung endpoints sa abscissas. So, aside from A and B, we will pick the N plus 1 abscissas doon sa loob ng interval. So, hindi natin pinipili si A at saka si B to be part of the abscissas. This could be... Um, well, this could be advantageous. Bakit pa merong uh, closed formulas? Advantageous kasi to kapag ka merong kang discontinuity dun sa endpoints. Alright? Kasi di ba minsan hindi defined or posibleng hindi defined yung function dun sa left o kaya sa right endpoint. Um, integrable pa rin yung function, right? Kaya lang may butas siya sa A o kaya sa B, that's fine. Pero kapag ka ginamit mo yung um, quadrature rule, kailangan mo yung function value sa A at function value sa B. And if you don't have any information about that, then magpa-fail yung, uh, inter yung integration formula mo. Kaya kung may mga ganung issues, uh, an open formula is, uh, is more wanted than a closed formula. Okay? Lalo na kung meron kang isang function, halimbawa, meron ka isang function, Tapos meron siyang removable, removable discontinuity dito. Ito yung A, ito yung B. All right? Of course, pag nataon na itong, itong uh, kung yung x value sa whole, say si x sub k, ay isa dun sa mga quadrature um, abscissas, then magpe-fail yung formula mo kasi uh, walang f of x sub k, undefined yung f of x sub k. All right? Now, if that is the case, Pwede mong hatiin yung interval into two pieces. Pwede hatiin mo siya from A, B, uh, from A to X sub K, tapos from X sub K to B. Tapos sa dalawang sub-intervals na to, computein mo yung, yung approximate number 1 kay integral, yung approximate number 2 kay integral, and then the actual integral will be I upper 1 plus I upper 2. Okay? Kaya lang again, kung gagamit ka ng open formula, Magpe-fail yun kasi hindi defined yung f of x sub k. Now, if you want to, to, to uh, stick to this plan, ang gamitin mong integration formula ay open formula para hindi kasama si a at saka si x sub k dun sa integration quadrature, uh, integration abscissas. So, ang mangyayari, dito ka pipili sa interior ng n plus 1 data points. Tapos, yun yung gagamitin mo dun sa quadrature rules. Okay. Now, most of the times we choose the interpol uh, the uh, the integration uh, abscissas to be equally spaced. So, kung equally spaced, yung pipili natin mga x sub i's sa open as uh, a closed formulas. Ito yung formula para sa mga x sub i's. Okay. So, because essentially we are getting n sub intervals for the closed interval a b. So, ibig sabihin, yung increment o yung distance sa pagitan ng dalawang x sub i's would be the actual length of the, in of the interval all over n. Kung gagamit ka ng n plus 1 points, ito dapat yung layo ng mga x sub i's mula sa isa't isa. Because again, those n plus 1 points will generate n sub intervals. So, ibig sabihin, bawat sub intervals whose length would be the distance between two consecutive abscissas should have length or should be equal to the actual length of the interval all over the number of subintervals. And then to get from one exabyte to another, we just add, we just need to multiple uh, to add a multiple of delta x. So para makuha si x1, simula ka kay a, magdagdag ka lang ng isang delta x. Para makuha si uh, x2, Mula kay A, magdagdag ka lang ng dalawang delta X, and so on, hanggang makaabot ka sa X sub N, which is equal to B. Okay? In contrast to the open formulas, if we'll be using uh, open formulas, we need to divide B minus A by N plus 2 to get the increment in X. Bakit N plus 2? Kasi madadagdagan ng dalawa yung pipiliin natin na, na X sub I's. Kasi nga, hindi kasama yung endpoints A and B dun sa mga interpolatory, uh, dun sa mga uh, quadrature abscissas na gagamitin natin. Kaya mas malaki yung denominator dito kasi mas maraming sub-intervals yung kinoconsider natin. 
Okay, so we're gonna get n plus two sub intervals. So that means we have n plus three data points. Bakit naging n plus three in data points? Kasi pipili tayo ng n plus one data points dun sa interior and si A at saka si B kasama sila dun sa pagdi-divide ng sub interval. Pero dun sa final formula, n plus one data points lang yung gagamitin natin kasi e siya pwera yung A at saka si B. Okay? And once you get this delta X, to get from one abscisa or from the first, uh, from one X byte to another, magdagdag lang tayo ng I plus one times delta X. So para makuha si X1, si A, dadagdagan lang natin ng dalawang delta X. Or sorry, para makuha si X sub zero. Nagsimula nga pala tayo kay X sub zero. So yung unang abscisa ay X sub zero. So mula kay A, magdadagdag lang ako ng isang. 0 plus 1, isang delta x, para makaabot siya doon. So si A hindi talaga kasali. Para makapunta kay x1, magdadagdag ako kay A ng dalawang delta x and so on, hanggang makaabot ako ng x sub n. But x sub n will not be equal to, uh, will not be equal to b. Alright? So ito yung pagpili ng equally spaced abscissas. Nakadepende siya kung open o close yung formula na gusto mong gamitin. All right. Is everything fine so far? Parang ang dami ko nang nasabi pero wala pa tayo dun sa actual formula, di ba? Pero don't worry. Um, siguro at this point, kaya nyo nang gawin or i-derive yung formulas on your own. Kasi ito lang naman talaga yung idea. Magpadaan ka ng interpolating polynomial, i-integrate mo yung interpolating polynomial. So to illustrate this process, even though I believe you can do it on your own, eh, tingnan natin i- uh, Tingnan natin yung mga pinakamaliliit na quadrature rules. Pag sinabi kong pinakamaliliit, sila yung gagamit ng pinakakakaunting data points. Okay? Halimbawa, kunin ko si i1 right? para uh, i-approximate yung integral ni f of x from a to b with respect to x. So si i1, siya yung quadrature rules na nagpapalit ng degree 1 interpolating polynomial para kay f of x. So si i1, gagamit tayo ng dalawang data points. So ibig sabihin si i1, something plus something. Ayan yung itsura ng formula. Okay? Now, it says here that that will be equal to this guy. Bakit ganito yung nangyari? Alright? Siguro tingnan natin yung intermediate steps. Sabi natin si i1 of f ay magiging integral ng degree 1 interpolating polynomial with respect to x. Alright? Tapos pag ginamit ko yung Lagrange form, so uh, closed formula nga pala to, no? so kailangan ko ng dalawang points para makuha si P1. Pero si P1, dalawang points yung kailangan ko, e eh, required ako na gamitin si A at saka si B as abscissas kasi nga closed formula ito. So ibig sabihin, kukunin ko yung interpolating polynomial na daraan kay A at saka kay B. So, halimbawa, ito yung function na gusto kong i-integrate. Okay? Tapos, kukunin ko yung function value kay A, function value kay B, kukunin ko yung degree 1 interpolating polynomial, pero yung degree 1 interpolating polynomial naman ay isang straight line lang. Kunwari, straight line yan, passing through the interval AB. Tapos, ang gagawin ko, ang idea nitong I1, i-approximate niya yung integral, Yung actual integral ay itong yellow. I-approximate natin yan using the area of the trapezoid bounded by the interpolating polynomial dun sa taas. Tapos na-spoil ko na, dapat sa derivation na to, ang makukuha ko ay yung trapezoidal rule na kilala natin from Math 36. Kasi yun nga yung idea, para nag-drawing lang ako ng trapezoid on the interval AB para makuha yung um, quadrature rule. And what's the area of the trapezoid? The area of the trapezoid is the average, the average height, all right? So ang, ang height dito ay f of a, ang height dito ay f of b. Kunin natin yung average, f of a plus f of b all over 2 times the width, yung width naman ay b minus a lamang. So the formula that we get, that we should get is b minus a times f of a plus f of b all over 2. The area of the trapezoid. Okay? Now, tingnan natin kung makukuha talaga natin yan. Okay? 
by using uh, the uh, the interpolation approach. Okay, so kung ko yung interpolating polynomial, okay, na p1, salamang naman ay yung function value kay a dun sa unang absisa times the Lagrange basis polynomial. So yung Lagrange basis polynomial, pwede yung simulan sa denominator tapos gawin yung uh, absisa minus yung iba pang absisa na pwede yung ilagay. Dalawa lang naman yung absisa ko, A and B. Hindi ko pwedeng ilagay si A dito kasi pag naglagay ako dyan ng A, magzi-zero yung denominator. So mag-start na ako kay B. Tapos yung numerator naman niya magiging X minus B lamang. So magmamatch lagi ito. Alright, yung mga subtrahens. Plus, f of b times um, b minus all of the abscissas. So, supposedly, product yun ng mga b minus abscissas. Kaya lang, dalawa lang yung abscissa. Bawal ako mag minus b kasi mag zero siya. So, no choice ako. Isa lang yung, uh, yung, yung, uh, isa lang yung factor dun sa Lagrange basis polynomial. May denominator siyang b minus a. Pero yung subtrahens dapat match, tapos kailangan may x dyan. Alright? Then, gagamitin ko yung linearity ng integral. So, pwede ko itong hatiin sa dalawa. f of a times x minus b over a minus b dx plus integral from a to b ng f of b times x minus a over b minus a dx. Alright? And then, f of a is a constant. It can come out of the integral f of b is a constant, it can come out of the integral, leaving us only with the integral from a to b of x minus b over a minus b, which is as promised. Nakita na natin to kanina, dun sa general description natin, na yung weights lang naman pala ay yung mga, ang weights lang naman pala ay yung, uh, antagan, yung integral ng Lagrange basis polynomial. So meron akong function value dito, times the weight, and the weight is exactly as we expected siya dapat yung integral ni L sub 1. Ganun din yung mangyayari dun sa pangalawang term. Sa pangalawang term, oops, nasama yung isa. Ito yung function value times the associated weight, which is the integral of the Lagrange in uh, basis polynomial. And that's what we have here. Okay. Function value times weight plus function value times weight. So it's just for us to integrate this guy. Uh, madali lang siyang integrate. Kaya lang I did a mistake here. Dapat may over 2 pa yan. Tapos may over 2 pa yan. Kasi nilabas ko lang naman yung a minus b. Constant kasi siya. Integral ng x minus b ay x squared over 2 minus bx. Ganun din dito. Alright? And then plug in b and a. Take the difference. Magiging ganito lang siya after simplification. And regrouping some of the factors, we get this guy, which is exactly the trapezoidal rule. And this is what we expected. Kasi graphically, ang nangyari lang naman, itong quadrature rule na ito ay nagko-compute ng area ng trapezoid. And indeed, this is the area of the trapezoid. Okay? Now, you can do this for more points. Kaya lang kung more points... Masahaba ngayon yung, uh, yung integral. Kasi halimbawa, gagamit ka na ng tatlong points, A, B, and C. Or actually, sige, wag natin A, B, and C. Gawin natin X1, X2, X3, hanggang X sub N. So, kung mas marami yung points na gagamitin mo, so mag-start ka sa F of X sub 0, alright? Tapos yung Lagrange basis polynomial, mas madaming factors. So, pwede siya maging X minus X sub 1 over X0 minus X sub 1 times x minus x2 over x0 minus x2 times hanggang makarating ka sa x minus x sub n over x0 minus xn plus f of x sub 1 times x minus x0 over x1 minus x0 times um, x minus x2 over x1 minus x0 sorry, mali x1 minus x2 until makarating ka sa x minus x sub n over x1 minus x sub n, and so on. Mas dadami lang ng dadami yung terms na kailangan nating integrate with respect to x. But we don't have to worry about that kasi guaranteed tayo na bawat isa dito ang mga polynomials lang din naman. Okay? 
Now, some other familiar Newton codes rules sa ito, si Simpson's rule. Si Simpson's rule ay I2. Ang nangyari, yung integrand F, papalitan natin ng quadratic interpolating polynomial. Alright? So, dahil I2 yung quadrature rule, gagamit tayo ng tatlong points. F of A, F of A plus B over 2, at saka si F of B. Kasi nga, sabi natin, equally space yung ginamit kong points dito. So, mula kay A, papunta kay B, tatlong points yung kailangan ko, so kailangan ko pa yung nasa gitna nila ang dalawa. Okay? A plus B over 2. Tapos, kung mag-undergo kayo ng same process as before, makukuha nyo yung uh, weight para kay F of A ay B over A over 6, uh, B minus A over 6. Para kay F of A plus B over 2, ang weight niya ay 4 times B minus A all over 6. Tapos para kay F of B, B minus A over 6 din. Tapos kung hindi ka pa nakontento dyan, pwede kang gumamit ng apat na points. And you will get this uh, formula, which we call the 3 8 rule. And then if you're not yet satisfied, then gumamit ka ng limang points. Ang makukuha mo naman ay itong Bull's rule. Walang kung ba't na doble yung rule, pero yeah, Bull's rule naman siya. Okay. Uh, the idea, why we are keep on adding some data points, kasi parang susundan natin yung sa interpolation. Sabi sa interpolation, the more points we used, the better the approximation becomes, at least theoretically. Alright? So, kung mas marami ka palang points na ginagamit, posibleng mas gumanda ng gumanda yung approximate natin sa, sa actual integral. So that's why if you're not satisfied with the trapezoidal rule, you can go ahead and do Simpson's rule. Kung hindi pa swak para sa iyo yung result from Simpson's rule, 3 8 rule, and so on. Okay. Now, uh, any questions about the closed formulas? Okay. So yung open formulas, same process din naman siya. Yun nga lang, etcha puera yung A at saka si B sa pagpili ng absisas. So, kung meron tayong interval A, B, A, B, so yung pinakamaliit or pinakamaiksing uh, quadrature, uh, open Newton Coates uh, quadrature ay yung one point lang yung ginamit. Kung one point lang yung ginamit, so yung PPV lang ako ng isa, and a uh, usual choice is the midpoint between A and B. Ito lamang si X sub zero. Okay, isa lang yung point na gagamitin natin. And uh, that will give us uh, a degree zero interpolating polynomial, okay, which would be a horizontal line passing through f of x sub zero. Pag hinuha mo yung area, sorry, excuse me. Pag hinuha natin yung area under the horizontal line, uh, area lang siya ng rectangle, right? It would be the height, which is the function value at x sub zero. Ito siya, function value at the midpoint, times the length of the interval, which is B minus A. And that's this guy. So area lang ng rectangle yung kukunin natin. Okay? But you can also derive this using the uh, interpolation procedure that we have discussed above. Kasi madali lang naman siya, integral from A to B. Uh, yung degree zero interpolating polynomial dyan ay F of uh, A plus B over 2 lang naman. Integrate it with respect to X. So this will be f of a plus b over 2 evaluated from a to b, and that will give us this guy. Okay? Now, syempre, baka hindi ganong kaganda yung uh, result from uh, using only one point. Magdagdag pa tayo ng points na gagamitin. Halimbawa, dalawa na yung points na gagamitin ko. So kung dalawa na yung points na gagamitin ko, ibig sabihin kailangan kong hatiin yung interval into... Three subintervals, okay? So actually, yeah, para magkaroon ng dalawang points sa gagamitin. So first subinterval, second, and third. Tapos ang pipiliin ko ang naabsisas ay ito. This will become my x sub 0, and this will become my x sub 1. So yung distance sa to ay delta x, yung distance sa to ay delta x, yung distance sa to ay delta x. Now, the choice of arbitrary... Um, uh, the choice of uniformly distributed uh, exabytes is by convenience lang or for convenience lamang. You could have chosen the x sub zero and the exabytes to be any of the abscesses uh, or any of the x values on the interval a, b. 
posible na hindi equally spaced yung pili nyo. Pwede silang pili nyo sila to be the roots of the Chebyshev polynomial. Pwede rin siyang roots ng uh, Legendre polynomials or whatever. So pwede randomly chosen din yung mga exabytes. Pero I think sa, sa handout, pinasimple ko yung derivation, ginamit ko lang ay equally spaced notes. Okay? Now, if you will use these two points, x sub 0 and x sub 1, you will get this guy as your i1, which is kind of similar to the trapezoidal rule, except na yung ginamit natin trapezoid ay hindi f of a at saka f of b yung respective heights. Kasi nga, hindi sila kasama dun sa, dun sa gagamitin natin na uh, endpoints or gagamitin natin na abscissas, all right? But the process is similar. Then if you take another leap, you'll use uh, three points to get I2. Ito naman yung formula. And then this guy would be for I3. All right? Now, to illustrate this process, let's use this uh, formulas to approximate ln2 or ln of 2. Uh, after the invention of calculus, ganito na yung ginagamit ng mga tao para mag-calculate uh, ng, uh, mag-approximate ng transcendental numbers o ng, uh, uh, yeah, mga transcendental numbers. Um, dati kasi ang ginagawa nila geometric yung approach pero nung naimbento ni Isaac Newton yung uh, yung calculus uh, naisip niya na gamitin yung uh, Bildian theory of integration para ma-approximate ma si pi tapos um, uh, kumalat na yung method so parang ganito yung ginagamit nila pakita natin yung pag-approximate para sa ln of 2 now ln of 2 is the exact integral of 1 over x from 1 to 2. So if you want to approximate ln of 2, we can in turn approximate this integral. So just taking a equals 1, b equals 2, and f of x is 1 over x. So if we will be using Newton Code's quadrature rules, ibig sabihin si 1 over x, papalitan lang natin by, uh, by an interpolating polynomial. Okay? And uh, bahala na tayong pumili ng mga abscissas. It could be closed. It could be open. But let's take advantage of the formulas we just derived. So pag ginamit ko yung trapezoidal rule, makikita nyo, kailangan ko lang yung f of 1 at saka yung f of 2. So this would be 1. This would be 1 half. 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves times b minus a over 2. So times 1 half, we're going to get 3 fourths. And 3 fourths is within 8.2% ng ln2. Okay, kinuha ko lang yung relative error between ln2 and 3 fourths. Now, hindi pa siya ganun kagandahan. 8.2%. So, let's try the Simpsons rule. Kapag ka Simpsons rule na, we'll have 25 over 36, and the relative error goes down to 1.87%. If we move uh, another formula further, we'll use the 3 eighths rule. Makukuha natin approximate ay 111 over 160. So tapos makukuha natin ay 0.0870%. Kung gagamit ako ng bull's rule, okay, doble na naman yung rule. Pag gumamit ako ng bull's rule, makukuha ay 4367 over 6300, which is accurate up to 0.0040%, which is excellent. All right? So dit, mukhang dito makakuha tayo ng sequence na nag up na nag uh, na nagko-converge kay uh, 1 over uh, nagko-converge kay ln of 2 okay so just use as many uh, as many um, data points as needed to get a better and better approximate for ln 2 pag tiningnan naman natin yung um, yung open rules okay or yung open formulas pag ginamit ko yung midpoint rule 2 thirds yung makukuha ang approximate that's a 3.82% error if we'll use the two-point open Newton code quadrature rule, we'll get this approximate, which is uh, or which has 2.62% error. So three points open, we get this with 0.15% error. And uh, for the four-point open formula, we'll get this approximate with a very small 0.11% error. Okay. But among these uh, formulas that we tested, it seems that the bull's rule gave the best approximation to ln2. Okay, so I hope it's fine if I just brushed over the, uh, 
the calculations of these values kasi straightforward na substitution lang naman siya dun sa formulas, okay? Now, let's try to make sense. Bakit maganda yung mga approximates na nakuha natin? Well, we'll look at figure 8.2. Sa figure 8.2, makikita natin yung graphs ng actual integrand in, uh, in blue at saka yung graphs ng mga pinampalit natin dun sa 1 over x, yung interpolating polynomial para kay 1 over x. Pinag, uh, ginraph ko sila dito ng magkakasama sa figure na to. Tapos makikita nyo na except for uh, the, the integrand using the trapezoidal rule, halos magkaka-overlap na yung mga integrand ng 1 over x, yung integrand para sa Simpson's 3 8 rule at saka sa Bull's rule. Okay? Pag in-enlarge ko siya, ito yung makikita natin. Okay? Uh, first observation pala, dito pa lang sa graph, kita na natin na ito yung mga graph ng mga integrand para sa closed formulas. Kasi tingnan nyo, nag-agree silang lahat sa f of 1. Nag-agree silang lahat sa f of 2. So, ibig sabihin, dumaan lahat ng integrands sa f of 1 at saka sa f of 2. Which is as promised because uh, a and b, 1 and 2, are parts of the interpolatory abscissas. Kaya nag intersect sila dapat dito, saka dito. Alright? Tapos dun lang nag-overlap yung, uh, yung integrand sa trapezoidal rule at saka yung actual integrand. Kasi linear interpolant yung sa trapezoidal. And you see na sa Simpsons 3.8 saka sa Bull's rule, halos magkasindikat na yung interpolating polynomial at saka yung actual integrand 1 over x. And that explained why maganda yung approximation. Kasi ang ina-approximate natin ay yung area under the region. So, sana matrace ko yung blue region dito. Ito yung ina-approximate natin na integral. Tapos pag ginamit ko yung uh, integral ng Bull's rule, ng 3 8 rule, at saka ng uh, uh, Simpson's rule, yung makukuha kong approximate ay kamukhang kamuka nitong shaded region na ito, which is the actual shaded region that we want to approximate or to, to have the area of approximated. Okay? Now, doon naman sa open formulas, ito yung graph. Stand out yung uh, horizontal line. Yung horizontal line, ito yung sa midpoint rule kasi degree zero interpolating polynomial siya. But the rest ay nandito na. So, siya yung para sa two-point, open Newton Coates quadrature rule, three-point, and four-point ONCQR. Okay? Tapos, kung makikita nyo, halatang-halata na ito ay open formulas. Kasi tingnan nyo sa one, when x is one, and x is two, sila yung endpoints ng integral, hindi nag-overlap yung mga graphs, or hindi nag intersect yung graph ng mga integrands. Kasi nga, ang usapan, hindi naman kasama si A at saka si B sa interpolatory abscissas. So, kaya hindi natin in-expect na mag-intersect mag, uh, yung mga yan kay F, uh, kay F of 1 at saka kay F of 2. Alright? But, nevertheless, uh, nasan ba yung ina-approximate natin? Ito yung ina-approximate natin na area under the blue curve. Ito yung area na ina-approximate ko. Of course, there's a large error when using the horizontal line. Kahit yung kulay red. Tingnan nyo tong kulay red. So, yung kulay red ay para sa 3.0 CNR. Medyo malaki yung error dun sa kulay red or kulay orange ba yan. Kasi ito ay, ito ay counted dun sa integral na ibibigay sa atin ng kulay red. Mm -hmm. Tapos, ito naman nasa kabilang dulo, hindi siya counted. Kasi nasa labas siya ng kulay red, pero nandun pa siya sa ilalim ng kulay blue. Alright, so kung makita nyo, may error na talaga dun sa open formulas. But that's the price that we need to pay kasi hindi natin isinama yung endpoints. Which could be crucial pagdating natin sa ibang mga functions, especially dun sa mga may discontinuities. Okay, now the idea here is it seems that the more points we use, the better the approximation becomes. But that will not always be the case. Kasi we get reminded of the Runge phenomenon. Kasi kung equally spaced yung data points na ginagamit natin, tas gumamit ka ng napakaraming data points na ang pakalaki ng degree ng polynomial na consider natin. So kung malaki yung degree ng polynomial na consider natin, magiging prone tayo sa Runge phenomenon 
which might cause crazy os oscillations near the edges of the uh, interpolatory interval, or in our case, the integration interval. And we don't want that to happen kasi lalaki yung L infinity error ng interpolating polynomial. And pag lumaki yung, inter yung, um, yung error ng interpolating polynomial, carry over yan dun sa error dun sa integration. Uh, if you let me borrow three more minutes, tingnan natin yung error. At tingnan natin kung paano na i-inherit nung integration formula yung error mula dun sa uh, interpolatory polynomial. Okay, uh, mabilis lang naman to. All right? So kung ko compute natin yung error dun sa in, dun sa integration formula, so we'll get uh we'll get the difference, the absolute difference between the actual value and the um, approximate. Okay? Kunin natin yung absolute error, okay? Now, I'll use the uh, linearity of the integral. Meron akong integral ng difference. I can take the integral, uh, sorry, I am taking the difference of integrals. I can take the integral of the difference instead. Okay? And then, alam ko tong f of x minus p sub n. Ito lang yung error dun sa interpolation. Okay? Alam na natin yung error term sa interpolation. Ano yung theoretical difference between f and p sub n? And that would be the n plus 1 derivative of f evaluated at c all over n plus 1 factorial times omega of x. Remember, omega of x is the product ng mga x minus x sub i, i going from 1 or i going from 0 until n. Nagpalit nga pala ako ng index dito. Okay. And then this guy is a constant, all right? So it goes out of the integral. So magkakaroon tayo nito. And then this guy would be uh, a constant. It will just be the integral of this polynomial from A to B, okay? Uh, the only problem here is that we won't know the exact value of this guy due to this factor. Kaya natin compute and possibly yung n plus 1 derivative ni f, pero hindi natin alam kung ano yung number c na ipaplug in natin. All we know is that the number c is on the open interval a, b. All right? But it seems that if this is a constant, then increasing the value of n might bring the error down, as we have seen in interpolation. Pero ang i-avoid natin ay yung blow up ng integral na to, which might happen if we have the Runge phenomenon at hand Kung saan lumalaki yung oscillations near the endpoints of the uh, of the interpolation uh, or the interpolatory interval, baka lumaki or mag-blow up yung value ng derivative uh, ng integral na to na hindi kayang i-contain n plus 1 factorial yung masyado niyang paglaki. All right? Now, if increasing the number of points will not work, then we need to devise some other ways. At ang natutunan natin sa interpolation theory, pag ganun yung nangyari, pag sobrang dami ng points tapos susceptible tayo sa Runge phenomenon, ang ginawa natin sa interpolation, hinati-hati natin yung interpolatory interval into several pieces, and then on each of these pieces, we constructed a low-degree polynomial na, mag, na dadaan dun sa, mga, dun sa dalawang data points, right? So we pasted together linear functions or cubic functions sa bawat sub-intervals. Yun yung ginawa natin sa splines at saka sa piecewise linear interpolants. So, sa integration, pwede ko rin itong gawin. Hati-hatiin yung mga, inti yung mga yung interval into several sub-intervals, tapos mag-approximate ako ng integral sa bawat maliit na sub-interval para dalawang points lang yung gagamitin ko or tatlong points na yung gagamitin ko, hindi masyadong dadami yung total number of points na gagamitin ko sa pag-evaluate ng bawat isang integral. And what will come out of that is what we call the composite integration formulas. And that would be the topic for Thursday. Tignan natin paano gawin yung composite approximation kung saan ang idea, hahatiin ko lang yung interval A, B into several sub-intervals that might be dictated by the abscesses that we have. And then on each of those sub-intervals, Calculate the integral using a low order rule, quanting points ang gagamitin ko, pwedeng Simpsons, pwedeng trapezoidal, and so on. Tapos, isasum ko lang yung little integrals to give me the approximation to the big integral. Okay? But that's for Thursday.
uh, sorry, that's for Friday. Okay. So any questions, guys, before we uh, before we part ways for today? Okay, so if there are no questions, then uh, thank you, Denmark, Narisa, and Noriel for joining me today. Let's see each other again on uh, Friday. Bye, guys. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Paul, sir. Mm -hmm.